Hello, friends. My name is Pastor Jonathan Connor. I serve as pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Manning, Iowa. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to share with you an open letter to fellow grievers. I think it will all become very clear simply as I read. So I share this with you and with anyone with whom you care to share. Dear fellow grievers, this morning, December 18th, 2020, my heart, like yours, was crushed by incomprehensible news. Max Sanford, a child, a teen, a son, a brother, a friend, a student, a teammate, and so very, very much more to so many people, died. An auto accident. I stare stunned at these words. They're so blunt, so cold, so terrible. How can it be real? I, like you, can see him in my mind, strong, kind, compassionate, empathetic, smiling. How can he be dead? How could death take him? How could it strike our community, strike us, our families, again? Why does death keep wrecking our lives, tearing our loved ones from us? Tears are our food once again. I am utterly wearied by death. I feel completely powerless, impotent, angry, and defeated. Truth is, I hate it. Death, I hate you. You steal, you destroy, you confound, you wound. Scripture is right. You are our enemy. But what am I doing talking to death? Death doesn't care. Death isn't a person. So I turn to God, but I know full well that death couldn't do its deed if God didn't let it. So God, why do you let death persist? Why do you let it harass us seemingly unchecked? Scripture says, not a sparrow falls to the ground apart from you. This has not happened apart from you. So why, Lord? Why? I don't understand. We don't understand. God, sometimes we don't understand you. We pray, we give. We worship, and this? But God is silent. He does not answer why. And I suppose as God, he doesn't have to. And I know as God, his goodness is not limited to my lifetime. He doesn't have to resolve all my hurts in my brief years to be good because well, my life doesn't end at death. But his silence is still difficult. But I'm not the first. We are not the first to hear this silence. The psalmists experienced it in Scripture. Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far away? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? God, I simply don't understand. I, I don't understand you. But I, but we, we have no help besides you. I mean, the psalmists knew it too. Whom have we in heaven but you? And Peter confessed it. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There is no other help in the face of death. What mortal among us can stop it? Turning our backs on you, Lord, in anger or despair, a temptation that intensifies in times of tragedy and loss, accomplishes nothing. It does nothing to heal our wounds and everything to cut us off from the only hope we have of ever being free from death, of ever seeing death die and life restored, of ever seeing our loved ones healthy and alive again, of ever being happy and whole again. So Jesus, I need you. We need you. We are so utterly broken, defeated, confused, confounded, and crushed. Our dreams lie shattered in shards of despair. 
by the working of the Spirit through your word. Bring the reality of your incarnation into our hearts. Reveal the depth and hope and beauty of its meaning to us. And as we consider it, help us to see and understand that you must love us. You must. Jesus, your incarnation is God's love coming in person among us. Friends, despite our suffering and sorrow, in ways often impossible to understand, God must love us. We do not and we will not understand why we suffer or why death is allowed to continue menacing us, but we do see who. We see who has taken on flesh to redeem us. We see who has known our sorrows, our losses, and our crosses. We see who has shed God's tears with and for us. And we see who will heal us and make us whole and happy again in the day of his coming. Jesus. Jesus. It's only Jesus. He is our hope. He is our only. He is our all. Jesus. Maybe why was never for us to know or even within our ability to understand. And maybe why isn't really what we long for. I mean, maybe what we're longing for is eternal healing and happiness. Maybe we just want to know that God cares and will make everything better someday. And that's the promise we have in Jesus. So surely knowing who is greater. Surely knowing Jesus is greater. So please, Jesus, help us. Be near us now. We need you. Our grief is crushing. Our wound is deep. Hold your incarnation, your promises, your crucifixion, death, and resurrection, your approaching return, your final and full defeat of death, your resurrecting and reuniting of the dead, and the renewal of all things. Hold these before our eyes. Place these realities in our hearts. Plant hope in these realities deep into our spirits that we may hobble together in hope and stagger together in faith until you return to restore happiness into the deep down places of our being. We need you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for taking a few minutes to reflect with me. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord watch over you, keep you in his grace, both now, even to life everlasting. Amen.